The following video is rated T for Triggered. Best I get is like a bottle of cheap cologne from the 1990s. What did I do to deserve that kind of a gift? I mean, that was like curve. Like, oh, I don't even know what that is. You know, I'm pretty sure graphics cards are my love language. My friend gave her brother a graphics card, an RTX 3080 at that, for his birthday four years ago, and I'm still jealous. I haven't even met the guy, but I can guarantee you he's not more worthy than me. The best I got was a bottle of cheap cologne from the 1990s and a box of protein bars. One had raisins in it. Who puts raisins in protein bars? That's too much sugar. On top of that, what even is a curve? What were we talking about? Where is my graphics card? Here are my top five graphics cards. That ruined my whole day now that I thought about that. Here are my top five graphics cards from 2024 for the month of March. Getting started, before we go, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe button. Helps grow the channel, helps me help more people. And yeah, let's get started here. Alrighty, so for 1080p gaming, if you're gonna hold my feet to the fire on the best graphics cards for that, um, basically anything, like a toaster will work. So I don't know, <laughs> like why are we going so into for 1080p gaming? Like it's basically more CPU bound than it is GPU bound. And for those of you at home, basically your processor is a little bit more important than your graphics card if we're talking about 1080p. And if you have a monitor, if you go into the settings and it tells you that it's 1080p, then that means that it is the default settings and it's basically more CPU intensive than GPU. So you don't actually need a powerful graphics card in order to run this guy. So what I would actually recommend is a 1080 or something along those lines or any heirloom that's been passed down from your family. Like I, I still, you know, pull one out for my Zotac 1080 Ti Mini that died on me. So if you have like a 1080 or a 1060, any of those guys, you know, like any card that you can find that is, you know, relatively cheap, that should be enough to run a 1080p gaming setup. So, you know, you might be able to get a graphics card, the, the monitor and the PC for under $200, depending on how desperate they are. So I would say the 1080 Ti kind of fits the bill. But if we're talking about builds, I would say a 50, uh, 5600G, which is a AMD processor is kind of like a mid-grade processor, but it's great for gaming because you don't really need much when we're talking about gaming. You really only need like a 5600G, about eight gigs of RAM, and the guy on our list, the GTX 1060. Now you can go 1080 because 1080 may be the same price as 1060s these days, but if you can find a 1060, I would say somewhere in that area is kind of what you're looking for. So, so any kind of cheap graphics card in that price point, like $100, $100, $150 uh, will work but I would suggest, and the one that takes my spot is the 1060 because you can probably still find that for cheap and it hasn't been scalped yet. So next we have the mid-grade tier. Those who have a monitor that's resolution is 2560 by 1440. And for you guys there, those are people who usually pay like your ARPGs, your shooters, your adventure games, Mario, stuff like that, or they play something a little bit more. You know, they may play a Diablo. I wanna say Overwatch, but I was kinda holding my breath. Those guys are kinda in your mid tier, so that's usually gonna be around the 300 bucks price point. And if we are talking things that are in the $300, then the first card that comes to mind that I think would fit this bill better is the RTX 4060. I honestly don't know if I can actually pick anything else and still keep my gamer card. The RTX 4060 is really good in this particular price point, mostly because the price, but two, you get DLSS, something that you don't get from the RTX 3060, even though the performance is relatively similar between the two cards. DLSS is essentially frame generation. It's a way of manipulating the amount of frames that you can get by actually inserting in more frames which gives you a higher frame rate overall all right back to the video now there are some amd cards that are going to be down the list here but the rtx 4060 for what you get at that price point is a great card especially if you also want to do things in adobe like decoding now i know you can also use hardware decoding with the amd but the graphic card for nvidia has been along for so long and for those of you who aren't aware hardware decoding essentially if you decide that you wanted to make youtube videos and edit YouTube videos. Well, if you wanted to render them, then it's faster with an NVIDIA graphics card than it is with an AMD graphics card. So, or without a graphics card entirely, just using the CPU. So I would say that it's usually a little bit better to go with an NVIDIA graphics card. And at that price point, an RTX 4060 is great. On top of that, if you decided that you wanted to build a smaller rig, well, the RTX 4060 has a single slot graphics card that fits the bill and can fit in a lot of smaller builds. So if you, you know, if you wanna do something, you know, like super portable, super small that can fit in a backpack, the RTX 4060 single slot is great for that. 
So that would be my first pick on the 2K price point. Next up, we have the 2K High Frame Rate Club. This is going to be anybody at that 2K 2560 by 1440, but 144 frames per second on your monitors. That means your monitor can handle anywhere between 144 to 240, maybe 360, depending on if you have a new one, that's crazy, but going with the fact that you probably have 144 hertz or more. That is your refresh rate. That is how long your monitor refreshes the image. So as long as it's you know around 120, 144, this is kind of that club for you. Generally, if you have that kind of monitor, you usually are looking to pay a little bit more for your graphics card. And for those people, I would say you're probably in the $500 tier. And if we are talking $500, then the best card I would say you should go with is the 7800 XT or the 6900 XT. I love this graphics card. I still have my 6900 XT in my Meshalicious, which is a all white case that you see in the background. That card is great. Uh, it does a lot for you. You know, I don't run into any issues. You know, you might have a little driver issues, but you can say the same thing for Nvidia. But generally those people that are at the 144 Hertz mark have pretty much all gone into gaming. So because of that, you can go with the AMD card. Uh, you know, as far as streaming, AMD is also, you know, the decoders for that for the 7800 XT are actually pretty good. So if you wanted to stream, it got you. If you wanted to play games at 144 Hertz, you know, high settings on 2K, it got you. So, so you know, you don't have any issues there. And it's just, it's a great card all around. It definitely pushes, you know, up above its pay grade, especially the 6900 XT. It trades, you know, blow for blow with the 7800 XT, which is one of a new, one of the newer cards that came out. So, so, so kudos to anybody who has a 6900 XT. I'm bringing that card up because you might be able to find that card used cheaper than the 7800 XT is now. But that 7800 XT definitely hits that price point and it, and it deserves my recommendation for the uh, best card for people who are on the higher end of the 2K spectrum. Next up, we have the 4K crowd. That's anybody who has, you know, like a 4K resolution. Basically, your smaller resolution is actually 2160p. Your larger one is 3096 or 40, 40, 4192 or 4092. So, so basically, you have a, essentially a 4K resolution. So that's like four 1080p run resolutions or something along those lines. But basically, it is a very high-end resolution, okay? So generally, if you have a 4K, monitor and you have higher refresh rate, then you kind of are already at that 1K price point looking at like a 1K graphics card because the cards that I just mentioned, like for example, the 6900 XT, 6900 XT can push 4K 60 frames per second in most games. You know, it's only when you're trying to go like a 4K 120 frames per second that you're gonna run into all kinds of problems. So so that is why I would say to you, your budget should go a little bit higher. And if it does go a little higher, we're looking at the $1,000 price point. Now, we wanna pull one out for our homie, the RTX 4090. That guy should be mentioned somewhere in this list, but it's not simply because it's been scalped to high heaven. I bought my 4090, it took like four weeks and four days and four hours of waiting in four lines <laughs> in order to get the 4090 is kind of like the higher end graphics card, but that guy is $1,600. That's just, it's not feasible. And on top of that, scalpers have put it at 2,000. Like if you go to like Newegg or something like that, you can see it at $2,000. That's just ridiculous. That's two of the second tier cards. Like why would you even bother? So at this point, it's completely outside of the uh, list, or even on high-end gamers. So I just wanted to mention that the, uh, I have not grown old on the RTX 4090. It's the card that I currently use. But at the same time, it's just, it's not feasible for your regular your average consumer is not feasible for anyone in this planet. Just pay me no mind. I have an issue. I realize that. But <laughs> so outside of that, you know, there's not a real reason to go for it, especially when there are so many good cards on the list. So if we're talking about 1K, 4K, 120, I would say between, there's really only two, right? So you're looking at the 7900 XTX and you're looking at the 4080 Super as well as the regular 4080. I am not crazy about the 4080 Super being very close to the 4080. I thought that it would be a little bit better than that. But with without all that withstanding, I still would say 4080 Super is kind of the way to go. The reason is, it's not because the 7900 XTX is a bad card. It is not. It is an excellent card. I have a 6900 XT. I love AMD cards. It's just of how feasible the 4080 Super is. If you want to stream, you have the best codecs, right? Now, I'm not saying AV1 is a bad codec, and, and codec is basically what you're using to stream. So basically, in order to show the video in a better level of compression, 
the codec that is used on the graphics card is chosen. And basically AV1 is the codec that is used for AMD. And, and that's the codec that you use when you're streaming. So it's not like the codec is bad. It's just that the NVIDIA codec has been around for forever. Ever. So, and the reason why the RX, the RTX 4080 Super takes the spot is because it's just, it fits everything, right? So if you wanted to use it for Adobe, so like if you wanted to create content and use it as an editing rig, you could. If you want to play the best games at 4K 120, you know, at high or ultra settings, depending on the game, like we're talking Overwatch, you're gonna get like 180 frames per second on a 4080 Super, then you can. If, you, if you're talking about, you know, streaming, you can. So I say all around the 48, the 4080 kind of earns that spot. The 4080 Super earns it even more because it put the price point down to something that is manageable. Right now you can get the 4080 Super for about 999, which is the same price for the XTX. And if you're comparing them car for car, I would say the 4080 wins. Unfortunately, the 4080 Super wins. Finally, we have the all around card, which is kind of like that all around card that you kind of go with it, regardless of which tier you have. So if you have plans on growing your monitor selection and you kind of, you know, have a 1080p, you may go 2K, you may go 4K. I would say the RTX 3090 deserves this crown. The RTX 3090 is so good, it made so many other cards obsolete. That car is great. It can, you can go two slot. If you can find the RTX 3090 in a two slot, it's still at the 1K price point. You know, they say it's better, you know, with the 40 series, but that's only with DLSS, which is basically frame generation. So they had to create a software frame generation just to compete with the RTX 3090. That card is amazing. It's the equivalent of the Zotac 1080 Ti from way back when, right? It's so much so, it was so good that they had to skip a generation. I realized the 20 series is not a skip of the generation, but to some people it is. So, so the RTX 3090 was just, it's such a great car and it basically can fit any tier. If you wanna try 2K high frame rate, you can. If you wanna go 4K 60, you can. Of course, you can't push it to like a 4K 120. You know, it, it can, it definitely would struggle with that particular point. But if you're trying to do a 4K, 4K 60, 4K 70, you know, and at medium settings, you most definitely can. So I think that the all around card is the RTX 3090, if you can find it, of course. If you can't find it, then you would have to go with one of the other cards in this list, depending on, you know, what genre monitor you're going with. But the the RTX 3090 does deserve a spot in this list because it is still, to this day, one of the best cars you can possibly get. Bro, if you have an RTX 3090 and you've had it for the past three years, keep it, just, just keep it. Unless you're getting ready to go to 4K 120, there is literally no point in upgrading. The RTX 3090 will give you everything you need and a bag of chips. And <laughs> all you have to do is take care of it, put a blower fan on it, and that guy is good to go. And so that's gonna be it for my top five graphics cards as of March, 2024. Hopefully newer cars will come out there. I do want to give a shout out to the Intel Arc, the Arc uh, A770. That guy almost took the spot. It's really, really good. The problem the Arc has that I've noticed is that a lot of the older things, like for example, VR, things of that nature, uh, it struggles with, right? Because a lot of its capabilities are new. So it doesn't have compatibility with certain things. And that kind of puts it out of our list, right? Because our list is for the average consumer. And the average consumer just doesn't have time to play games just yet, you know? And by games, you know, dealing with bugs or issues and stuff like that. So a lot of the cards that we've mentioned here are gonna be cards that are very, very easy to adapt to. And the Intel A770 just slightly misses it. That RTX 4060 is just way too good. So with that all being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you like this video, go to like, but if you really like it for me, go to subscribe. I love you either way. Take care, all the best, and bye.